Hey, Physics 30s, Mr. Jukley here again, uh, here to talk to you about curved mirrors uh, and lenses. I don't know why it doesn't say that up there. Lenses. Now it does in a really thick marker. Um, so, uh, yeah, curved mirrors and lenses. This is lesson six, by the way. Uh, the workbook can be a little tricky to follow along with, uh, but just it, it does go fairly well, and I'll let you know if we need to skip around or have a look at anything in particular. Um, so yeah, let's uh, let's jump into it a bit here. Uh, so curved mirrors and lenses, you know that the image is distorted. I'm sure you've seen this at like K days or even just looking in a spoon or something like that. And this that might actually be the closest thing that you've got to the curved the two curved lenses or sorry mirrors that you. Uh, Oh boy, at home. Um, and the rounder the spoon, the more spherical the spoon, the better, realistically, for this one. You can look at uh, one side or the other side as we go through and check it out. Okay, so two types of mirrors that we want to look at here. Uh, and one important thing, this is going to sound ridiculous, but it's kind of important. Uh, light rays bounce off mirrors. So the first type is a concave mirror. Uh, which is converging. So what's going to happen to light rays that are traveling parallel is they're actually going to converge. So after they reflect off, they're going to come back together or converge towards each other. Uh, the concave thing, uh, what I like to think about with this one is, so I'm going to highlight the inside of the mirror. The shiny part of the mirror is going to be highlighted in blue. And it's like those light rays are going into a bit of a cave there. Right, So that's one type of mirror that we look at. Again, when they come back, so when they reflect off, still following the, the laws of reflection here. So let's trace these in. Parallel light ray comes in, hits the mirror, and then reflects back. And I'll do the other one in a different color just to highlight it a bit. So parallel light ray. I'll tell about, talk about parallel to what in a second, reflects off the mirror, and it comes back. And they converge, I'll use this in red, they converge or they come together right there. Sorry, Colin, if you're looking at this, this uh, yeah, might be difficult colors for you. But um, anyways, so yeah, well, we should talk about some of these. There's a whole bunch of terms on here, right? A, a ton of terms that we've got. Uh, so first one that we're looking at is PA is the principal axis. Uh, so principal axis uh, is just a line that goes straight through the dead center of the mirror in three dimensions. Uh, so you kind of got a picture. It's like we've got a side cross view of the mirror, but realistically, uh, the mirror would be in three dimensions and just go straight through the center. Uh, then what we've got here is the V for vertex. So the vertex of the mirror is the point, kind of like the deepest point of the mirror. We've got the focal point, F for focal point, focal point. And we've got C for the center. And now C for the center, uh, you kind of got a picture of this being just like a gigantic sphere all the way around, everywhere you look at it, it's a huge, gigantic sphere. And realistically, we think about what we've done here is we've just cut a little piece of that sphere off, right? So uh, think about it as a giant, perfect ball, and we just cut a slice of it off, and that mirror is that last slice that we got. So the center would be the center of that gigantic sphere or that gigantic ball. Cool. Uh, am I missing anything here? So we've got the, well, we've got an interesting color on that one. Uh, so we got the principal axis, the line that goes straight through the center and extends out into space. We've got the vertex, that's the point, which is in the dead center of the mirror. The focal point, that's where parallel rays, so when we were talking about the parallel rays, we were talking about parallel to the principal axis. That's where they go to, that's where they meet up. And then we've got the center, pretending it's the center of a gigantic sphere. Cool, I think we've got everything there. Oh, the focal length at the bottom here. So one last thing to look at, this is my focal length. We'll talk about why it's positive in a second. But realistically, if you have uh, actual real light rays coming together on a converging mirror like we have here, it's going to be a positive focal length. Uh, so the focal length, we might as well talk about that a tiny bit more, I suppose, while it's up here and while we've got this nice, barely even scribbled on picture. Let me just clean it up a little bit here. Perfect. Okay. Okay. So the focal length, what we want to measure is essentially from the vertex 
to the focal point, and you'll notice that we've got this line that is extending vertically downwards and doesn't really show it, but would be extending vertically upwards as well. Um, so that's just a line that's lined up with our vertex. That's actually going to help us out quite a bit with our drawings, just extending that line where the dead, the very, very bottom of the mirror is. Cool. There is one thing that we should note. So spherical mirrors are not perfect. There's something called spherical aberration, which gives us many focal points, which gives us a blurry image. If you're ever looking at like a giant telescope or something like that, like a mirror telescope, um, you typically need a uh, more of a parabolic shape to get the focal point all in one spot. Uh, that being said, the math is a lot more tricky for that one, and we're dealing with fairly simple math that makes pretty good estimations here in Physics 30. Uh, so we're pretending that they are spherical. Okay, so one thing that you might not think is really a mirror, uh, but kind of works the same way, is uh, a satellite dish. So we get rays from a satellite, they come in, and they would come in parallel, so the, the vertex of that mirror or that satellite dish would be there. The principal axis, we could draw a line that comes kind of like this. So we've got rays that are coming in from satellites that are pretty much parallel. Those are green rays that are there. They bounce off and then they come together at the focal point. The focal point for this one is going to be right here, this big black dot. And typically what you see there is a receiver because the satellite dish is collecting not just these two parallel rays, but tons and tons and tons of these parallel rays that are all reflecting off and all meeting at that focal um, that focus and uh, or focal point and uh, you get a really really strong signal there so a satellite dish is actually uh, one as well sound collecting dish is not really dealing with uh, with EMR but same sort of idea we get the rays coming in that are going parallel to the principal axes uh, they collect at in this point, the focal point is a, uh, a microphone. Uh, cool. Same thing with solar energy. So oftentimes with solar energy, we have these gigantic mirrors uh, that collect the solar radiation. Here's a whole bunch of them. So solar radiation is coming down, bounces up, collects at the focal point, and that thing would heat up like crazy uh, with all that solar radiation uh, coming in. And if it heats up like crazy, there's the potential to generate electricity and do other wonderful things. Cool, cool. Okay, concave mirrors. You also see them, believe it or not, in your car headlights. Uh, it's just working a little bit opposite in this case. So now, if you're looking at the left hand, sorry, right hand side of the screen, you've got the light bulb, which is just highlighted in green. You'll never guess that is at our focal point and the light rays are coming out. It's kind of the opposite now. So light rays are coming out of that and they're bouncing off and they're bouncing back parallel. So the exact opposite thing that we just looked at, but this really focuses those rays forwards and pretty much any flashlight um, or most flashlights, I guess I should say, especially ones that have bulbs, uh, car headlights, all kinds of things have this. Uh, even the dentist light, when you go to the dentist and they're, they're blinding you with the light and digging away at your teeth, right? Same sort of idea. It focuses the light downwards. Okay, next one to look at here is convex or diverging. So converging meant coming together. Diverging means spreading apart. So once these rays, they're traveling parallel to our principal axis, remember our principal axis is uh, the line that just goes straight through and extends uh, out on either side from the vertex. Um, they're going to diverge away. So in this case, we've got the shiny side of the mirror. I'm going to highlight it in blue here. Shiny side of the mirror is here. Light is going to bounce off of it. And it's going to, in this case, bounce away or spread out. And in this particular case, if a person was standing over here, that's not a felt pen. If a person was standing over here and saying, hmm, I wonder where that light ray is coming from. Remember that people think that light rays travel in straight lines. So that person would think that that light ray is coming from behind the mirror. Now, if we look at the one on the bottom, it's the same thing. A person might think that that light ray is coming from here. And a person might think that all of those parallel light rays are converging at that spot behind the mirror. So in this case, our focus or our focal point is behind the mirror. And if it's behind the mirror, that's not real light rays that are coming back from there. So in this case, we call that a virtual focal point. Virtual focal point. Again, not real focal 
point, not real rays, so if it's not real, it's virtual. Now one thing to note with a uh, diverging mirror is our focal length, again that's from the vertex over to our focal point, is now negative. So if it's virtual, it's negative. It's, if it's diverging, it's negative. And again, the sphere for well, hopefully not making this too messy, the big sphere that this would be cut out of would go this way in this case. The center of that big sphere would be, well, again, past the focal point. Cool. So that's diverging. So applications of these, this is like when you're in the uh, the 7-Eleven and you're trying to pick out, uh, I don't know, some gummies or something like that, uh, and there's that mirror in the back of the store. Well, that mirror is designed so that the light rays that are coming in will spread out, and the person who's trying to see what's going on inside of his or her store uh, can see a larger image of what's going on in inside inside of the store. Um, we also see these um, in Edmonton street lamps, so a place where we'd want to spread the light out as much as possible. Again, for sound, we see them inside of theaters, so the light, or sorry, the sound waves come up and then they spread out to fill the theater. So perfect, we've got them there. Okay, so one thing to kind of look at with this is, could you do this? Could you use ray diagrams to show the focal length, to determine the focal length for both a concave and a convex mirror? So let's check it out. For a concave, fairly straightforward. We have those rays. We could trace them as they go in. We'll use blue, so we'd have the parallel rays coming in. We would trace them wherever the heck they meet up. That's where we're good to go. For the convex, it gets a little bit trickier because what might always, all we might see on a piece of paper or, or with these rays is it coming in and leaving. So coming in and leaving. So we'd actually have to do, I just discovered that this is a thing earlier. Hopefully none of my teacher friends see this and make fun of me here. Um, how do I rotate it? There we go. Okay. So I put this in, I'd say, okay, well, I'm going to rotate this a little bit. I'm going to make this match with, eventually, match with my ray that's leaving. And then I'm just going to go through and I'm just going to trace this back along the ruler to see where it came from. Same thing on the top. See how painful it is to, to do on the top. Less painful. I'm getting, uh-oh. Getting used to it-ish already. Sort of first time ever I swear okay and then trace that one back along the ruler there excellent we can ditch the ruler I'm just gonna throw it up there and then where they trace back where it appears that they're gonna meet is where our focal point would be if I wanted to figure out the actual focal length I just take that same ruler I put it down and I would measure it okay next thing to look at this is in Chicago this is the Chicago bean it's a gigantic curve mirror essentially um, so finding the image and figuring out what the image looks like in a curved mirror. Now, when you look at something like this, there is an awful lot going on there. Absolutely. There's just so much going on there. So what we want to do is we want to focus on just part of the image, and that's going to tell us what the rest of the image is going to look like. So see this cool guy down here, riding his bike, shirt off. Must be nice there, right? Absolutely must be nice. And then, I don't know, it's too blurry to tell that might be that person in the mirror. I'm guessing on this one, but that might be that person. If we wanted to figure out what that person looks like, I don't necessarily want to use the entire person, all his shorts, all his bike, everything like that. I just want to use part of the object. So what we're going to do is we're going to use just arrows to try and figure this out. So the arrow right now I've got in uh, red, it's my object, so O for object, and you'll notice that I've got my vertex, my focal uh, point, my center. Those are all going to be very, 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 very important pieces. And the other thing with my object, I guess, is I have an arrow head and I have an arrow tail. Both of those very, very important. So I'm going to use a straight line drawer. You should use absolute use a ruler for this one. And honestly, this is page, uh, where are we now? We're page... 100 and that's the homework. Give me a split second here. Oh, I'm looking in the wrong booklet. Sorry, guys. Um, we are on page, there we go, 
161. And it goes through both types of lenses and both types of mirrors all at the exact same time. So focus on the uh, the converging mirror, the mirror that looks like, uh-oh, the one that looks like we've got right here. Cool. Okay. So let's go through it. Let's check it out. The first one, what color do I have here? Black. The first one I'm going to do in black. So the first ray that I want to deal with, we've actually already kind of talked about. It is traveling parallel to my principal axis. And you'll notice how I'm actually going behind the mirror. I'm going to that vertex, or at least the extended vertex. Uh, once it hits that mirror, it's going to reflect back. And we've already seen this. It's going to reflect back through the focal point. Now I'm going to highlight the end of this arrow a little bit. Make it really, 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 really big. Because we want to pay attention to that particular ray when all is said and done. Okay, so first one's not so easy. Or sorry, first one's pretty easy. If it's going parallel, it's going to reflect back through the focal point. Let's check out and let's just get a different color here. Very nice. The second one, we've kind of already seen as well. So it's a ray that passes through the focal point. Once it hits the mirror, and again, we want to draw that until it goes through the vertex, so behind the, uh, just behind the mirror by a little bit. I just want to fix that up a hair. There we go. So perfectly through that focal point. And just like when we saw uh, the dentist light that's coming from, so the light's coming from the focal point, we would, see what color it is, perfect, same color. Uh, we would reflect back, and it would reflect back parallel to the principal axis. So nice, that one's going to be there. I'm going to highlight that in blue. I know it's not the same color, but I don't really want to find the exact same thing. But, uh, okay, parallel. We've already got two of these rays that are coming together. There's really only one ray left. So let's see here. Let's pick another color. Let's pick a color that I can actually get off of the screen. We'll go with green. I think that's green. I'm talking to a colorblind guy here, remember? So the last one... And the last one's sometimes kind of hard to draw because it doesn't necessarily always match up with the mirror, is if it goes through the center, it's going to actually reflect off the mirror back along the exact same path. So it hits the mirror and reflects back along the exact same path. Now you'll notice that it didn't actually hit the mirror, so we'd have to extend that out that way a little bit. Okay, so three three lines. To summarize, if we're going parallel to the principal axis, it reflects back through the focal point. If it goes through the focal point, it reflects back parallel. And then if it goes through the center, it goes back along the exact same path. Now, if we're trying to think about this, and we're trying to think about, okay, well, where would we actually see this? There's a lot going on right here. So your eye has to pick up on, and when you draw an eye, it has to pick up on at least two of the uh, two of the rays that are coming off the mirror. So I'm going to draw a pretty green eye. Pretty green eye is going to be right here. And by pretty, well, it actually looks more like a hairy donut, but that's okay. Um, there is my eye. Maybe I'll even write the word eye in it so you know what the heck I'm talking about. There's my eye. So it's picking up on that purple or blue ray and that black ray. And if it was big enough, it would also go with the green one. And let's see. All of these rays came from the tip of the arrow. They came from up here. And what our eye is going to perceive is where they come back together, that's where the tip of the arrow is. So I'm going to draw the tip of the arrow coming down where all of those rays come back together. The tail is still going to be on my principal axis. And this is going to be my image. Cool. Very, very cool. Here's a slightly nicer drawing of it. All right, same idea. So what we need to be able to do, um, again, is describe. So first off, figure out what's going to happen with this image, what it's going to look like. But we also want to describe uh, some of the characteristics. So this one, it is all real light rays. It is going to be upside down compared to the original, so inverted. And it's also smaller compared to the, the original. So those are things that we can do to describe it. So the original or the original object is what we're looking at. Cool. So I hope that makes sense for folks. Uh, again, if we want to draw the eye, uh, the eye has to pick up on at least two of those reflected rays. Cool. So this one, this is the one that you've got in your workbook. This is on page, let me find it here. 
It's actually one of the homework questions. Uh, so it's 1A on page 164. I'm going to get you to put it on pause for a second. I'm going to get you to try it out. Try and draw those three rays and see if you can figure out where the image is. So go ahead, put it on pause now. All right, so we'll see how far we got to with this one. Um, I'm just going to pick my three rays. I always like to start with parallel. It just for me, it makes the most sense. So I draw one that is parallel to the principal axis. Once it hits that principal axis, or sorry, once it hits uh, the line that goes through the vertex, I'm going to have it going back through my focal point. So right about there. Again, I'm going to highlight that with a big old arrowhead because that's what I want to look at and that's what I want to focus on when all is said and done. Let's pick a different color. So let's go to a green one. That ought to work. My next one that I usually like to draw is through the focal point. If it goes through the focal point, once it hits the mirror, it comes back parallel. Cool. So I've already got where two of them are coming back together. So that's nice. I just need where that third one is. And the third one's kind of the most annoying one to draw typically through the center. So let me just pick, I think that's red. I'm sorry if it's not. Um, so through the center. Well, it doesn't actually go through the center necessarily. So what I do is I say, okay, well, I've got a ray that's going through the center. It's going to hit the mirror if the mirror curves up like crazy like this. And then it's going to reflect back along the same path. Let me just uh, fix that up a tiny little bit. Put that out of the way. Yeah, close enough there. And uh, reflect back. Same color, please. Good stuff. And where all three of those rays come back together, that's where my image is going to be. So if I want to draw this image, I'm going to draw it in blue. All three of those rays came from the tip of the arrow. Where they come back together, it'll be the tip of the arrow again. So this is now going to be, uh, let's see, larger, because it definitely looks bigger than the original or the object. It's going to be inverted. And are those all real light rays that pass through there? Every single one of them is an actual real light ray that passes through. So I'd say that that image is real. And then if I wanted to figure out where exactly the eye goes, it needs to capture at least two of those rays. In this case, we can actually get three. So here's my crummy picture of a hairy donut that's supposed to represent an eye. Cool. So again, parallel through the focal point, through the focal point, comes back parallel, and then optical center, which is the most annoying one to draw, comes back along the exact same path. Okay. For a convex mirror, for a convex mirror. Um, so this is back on page, ooh, where's the workbook there? Back on page 161. Um, I believe page 161. Oh, maybe not quite 161. Those are all, oh yeah, yeah, okay. Page 161, they are there, it's just confusing me. Get back there. Sorry about that, folks. Okay, if I wanted to draw this one, it's the same idea. So same three rays, except notice that the focal point and the center is on the other side of the mirror. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to start with a hopefully red one. Good, it is a red one. And I'm going to go parallel to the principal axis. It is going to diverge away from the focal point. Now this is kind of a tricky one to draw, so it's going to go away from the focal point. I'm going to line that up the best that I possibly can here. Actually, you know what might help? Let's just put that there for the time being. What might help is a ruler. Hopefully I'm not fiddling with this. Not at all what I wanted. Hopefully I'm not fiddling with this ruler too much. So, let's have that there. I'm going to line my ruler up so it goes through that focal point and then just kind of move it up to here. Now the parts that I'd see for this is it looks like it's coming from that focal point, but realistically, this is actually an awesome tool. I really like this tool, um, the ruler I'm talking about there. Um, realistically, it's not actually coming from that focal point, it's just bouncing off the mirror. So if it's not a real thing that's coming from that focal point, we'll use a dotted line to show that. Cool. Okay, 
next one to look at. So there's my first one. It is, uh, if it's going parallel, it looks like it's going to come from the focal point. The next one that I want to deal with is, what if it's going straight towards that focal point? So if it's going straight towards that focal point, I'm going to have it till it hits the mirror. And then again, it looks, actually I should use a different color for that one. We'll use, uh, we'll use green. Yeah, green will work for us. So going in, looks like it's going to hit it there. Looks like it's coming or going to hit. So we're using dotted line going behind. And if it's looking like it's going to hit the focal point, we know going towards the focal point, we're going to come back parallel to the principal axis. So I'm just going to have my ruler. I'm going to reflect it. And it's actually coming back parallel to the principal axis. So I've got that one going there. Nice. This ruler is actually amazing. It's, I love this thing. This is a game changer, just so you know. OK, the next one, the ruler apparently is not long. Oh, but I can make it long enough. What a wonderful tool. OK, the next one is if we're aiming at our center, where does it go? Well, it just comes back along. I don't know what happened there. Undo. It's been drawing nice straight lines before. There we go. Uh, aiming at that optical center. There we go through. It's aiming right there. Uh, where's it going to bounce back? Well, it's going to bounce back along the exact same path. So bounce back along the exact same path. Cool. So let's get that ruler out of the way for a second here. This is where all of those rays sort of, you know, go, I suppose, for lack of a better word. But if we wanted to look at and we wanted to capture, so a person with their gigantic hairy eyeball over here. Those are eyelashes, by the way, if you were wondering. Uh, if we wanted to think, okay, where does it look like these are all coming from for this person? Uh, we might have to erase a couple of these lines. So I think the blue one's good because the blue one, as I trace that back, just comes not quite as straight anymore, but just looks like it's coming from the optical center. So the blue one's good. I think the red one, so when I trace this red one back, just putting some squiggles on it to trace it back. Looks like it's coming from the focal point, so that one's good. But this green one, this green one's a little bit funky. Let's clean that up a little bit here. Oh my goodness. Clean that up a little bit here. Because it doesn't actually look like it's coming from the focal point. It looks like, and if I just trace this line, I'm making a little bit more squiggly highlighting it there. If I just trace this line back, the person actually thinks it's coming from along that dotted line. So then where is my image? Well, my image, remember, if those rays are all coming from the tip of the arrow, where those rays come back together is where you'll have the tip of the arrow. So this is what the image would look like. And I should have drawn that dotted because are those real rays back there? Not at all, right? Not at all. I think go forward a little bit here. Um, OK, so I guess if I should describe this, this is upright. This is virtual. And this is smaller. Right, so upright because it's the same direction as the original arrow. Virtual because those aren't real light rays that are coming together at the tip of the arrow. And smaller, well, because it's smaller than the original. Cool, so that's that one. Try out activity 1B in your workbook and see if you can get it. I'll give you a big hint. All of the images are going to look exactly the same in uh, diverging mirrors, exactly the same. So put it on pause, try it out, and then we'll move forward. We'll check out some lenses. Cool. So I'm not necessarily going to do this one for the sake of time. It is literally exactly the same as the example that I just did. So if you want to walk through it again, just hit rewind and go back to it. Uh, and that's because, again, every single one of these uh, diverging mirrors, diverging mirrors will have the exact same image characteristics. OK. So next one we want to look at here is lenses. So we've talked about mirrors. Now we've talked about lenses. I'm actually going to skip through a couple of these real quick for the sake of time. Um, 
all of these, what I will say about each of these is uh, on page 162 at the top, and actually I think I have it right here, page 162, you can check out uh, essentially what's an answer key. I'm not sure if I can write on this. No, I definitely can't, but, ooh, but I can highlight it like that. Uh, so you've essentially got an answer key. So for converging, excuse me, converging mirrors and lenses, um, it tells us what we should expect if the image, or sorry, if the object is in a bunch of pr pr different places, don't know what's going on there. Uh, and then for diverging mirrors and lenses, well, we should always expect the exact same thing, smaller, upright, and virtual. Cool. So, yeah, I'm going to skip over these for the sake of time. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Same thing over and over. Okay, here we go. Lenses. Perfect. So lenses, we see them all over the place. Important thing to note with lenses, and you might think I'm being a little bit ridiculous here, but important thing to note is that light passes through lenses. Otherwise, we would not be able to see this lady's eyes if light didn't pass through, we would not be able to see, I have no idea what that person is working on, but we would not be able to see what that person is working on. Cameras would not be able to see what you want to take a picture of. Light passes through lenses. So you probably remember from previous lessons that, well, if it's going from air into glass and then back into air, there's some refraction going to happen. So the top diagram shows us, well, okay, we're going from a faster medium to a slower medium. So it's going to bend towards the normal line, and then we're going from a slower medium to a faster medium, so it's going to bend away from the normal line as it exits, and that's kind of annoying. Instead, what we can do is we can just kind of simplify, and if it is indeed a converging lens, we just so uh, go to a point called the optical center. Um, so oftentimes we see that as O for optical center. That's just in the dead center of the lens. Um, and we go, we line things up with that, and then they bend, in this case, if it's converging towards the principal axis. So there are tons of different types of lenses. We're going to focus on convex, technically biconvex and biconcave. So that means both sides are concaved or both sides are convex. Uh, but just know that there are a ton of different lenses that do a ton of different things. Okay. <clears throat> So if we've got convex lenses, these are converging lenses, you could probably guess that the light rays are going to come together. And just like with the mirrors, converging means real focal point. So we call that one positive. Cool. When we have diverging, OK, so when I diverge, those light rays are going to go away from each other. And if they go away from each other, parallel light rays, it's all about the focus parallel and focus. Uh, so they're going to appear, can't really see that one, appear to come from the focal point. Cool. That's not real light rays that are coming from that focal point. So we say that is a virtual focal point and we say that it is negative. So not so bad, right? So how do we determine the focal length? Same sort of idea, right? We see where those rays match up, where they come together, those parallel rays, and then we measure from our optical center. Cool. Same thing with this one, except we need to take our ruler and we need to trace it back to where it came from. Awesome. So finding the images in lenses. This is going to be very, very similar to finding the images in uh, mirrors, except if I go back a little bit here, back a little bit, you'll notice that there are two focal points for one on either side of each lens. So for lenses, where is it here? The big thing is when we're finding the images and lenses, you need to use both focal points. So you have to use both of them. So I always start with my parallel ray. Always, always, always start with my parallel ray. Um, and then I think, okay, if it's converging, I know it's going to go towards the principal axis. If it's diverging, I know it's going to go away from the principal axis. So let's sketch this one out here. Let me get my arrows. And what color do I have? Red. Yeah, red will work. Red will work. So I start with parallel to the principal axis. This is a converging lens. So I know that they're going to come together. 
right? Or, or at least go towards the principal axis. And I'm going to have that going through my focal point. Perfect. Okay. So this focal point has already been used up. Maybe I'll use red to say it's already been used up. So we can't use that one again. I'll use blue for my next one. Blue for my next one. So now my next light ray goes through a focal point, and we know if it goes through a focal point, it's going to refract and it's going to go parallel to the principal axis. Perfect. So big differences here. We've used both focal points. And then finally, the last one, which I'll just do in black. Uh, once I get the arrow, just do in black. Through the center, just keeps on going along the exact same path. And then again, you think to yourself, okay, where do those light rays match up? Well, it's where the red, blue, and black match up. Only color I haven't used yet is green. So go ahead and use green. Those light rays came from the tip of the arrow. So where they come back together, that's where a person's going to see the tip of the arrow. So if I want to describe this image, let's see. That looks like it would be smaller, inverted, and real. Smaller inverted and real right and if i wanted to draw an eye for this one remembering that light passes through the lenses the eye has to be on the opposite side as the object cool all righty so same idea just use both focal points here's a slightly nicer picture here's a slightly nicer picture but does the same thing shows the same ideas Activity 1A in your workbook, you can try this one out, give it a shot, put it on pause, when you're ready we'll get back to it. Alright, so I'm just going to use the same color for each of these, use that color. So I always start with parallel to the principal axes goes through the focal point. Nice. And then let's see. Through the focal point, goes parallel to the principal axis. Nice. We've already got two of them. Through the optical center, guess what? Exact same path. So through the optical center goes about there. And then where all of those rays match up, that's where showing where they came from. So the tip of the arrow, in other words, so the tip of the arrow has to be here. Now, if I'm looking at this one, this one looks like it is inverted. It's all real rays, so it's real image. And it is, let's see, it's a little bit bigger than the original. Cool. All right. Where would the eyeball go? Eyeball can go right there, right? It has to pick up on at least two of those rays. Cool. Okay. Image for diverging or concave lenses. Diverging or concave. So again, same sort of thing I always like to start with. Parallel to the principal axis. Oops, there we go. And now it's going to diverge away from a focal point, right? Or from the principal axis. So it's going to go up like this. Actually, where's my ruler? Let's get rid of that one. Let's get that ruler and struggle with that thing a little bit more. Not at all what I wanted. Two arrows at the same time. Not even close. Okay, so let's move this one down. How do I rotate it? How do I rotate this? There we go. Uh, so through the focal point and then back up to that spot. There we go. Very, very nice. Um, let's see. Shoot. Should have chosen a nicer color. Not that that color is not nice, but one that's easier for me to recognize. So it's going to diverge away. So it's actually going to go like that. And it's going to look like it came from that focal point. Cool. Okay. Let me get rid of the ruler, I hope. And we'll highlight the end of that ray that we're actually going to be dealing with. Cool. So there's our first one. Always go parallel first. The second one that we want to look at here is, well, if it's going through the focal point, it's going to come back parallel. So I need to line this up. The first focal point has already been used. So now I need to line this up with my second focal point. Let's pick a different color for this one. Let's go with that color. So it's going to be coming in, coming in, coming in, coming in, looking as if it's going to match up with that focal point, but realistically, it's going to, yeah, there we go, go parallel 
to the principal axis. It's going to shoot out this way. Awesome. And if we think about an observer over here, so a person standing there, uh, where to them it looks like it comes from, it looks like it's actually coming from somewhere back here. I deviated from the ruler there. I hope I don't pay the price for that later on. Okay. And then finally, the last one to deal with is through the optical center. And you guessed it. What path does it take when it goes through the optical center? Just going to use red for this one. It just keeps going along the exact same path. So let's ditch that ruler. Now an observer over here picking up on these three rays. We haven't really used blue very much yet. So this ray, this ray, and this ray. Where would an observer, if I have the biggest eyeball you've ever seen, standing around right there, where would it look like all three of those rays come from? Well, the green one looks like it's coming from back here. The red one looks like it's coming from and actually is coming from back there. And then what's the other one? The purplish one. That color I think I used. Uh, this one looks like it's coming from somewhere back here as well. So all three of those rays look like they're coming from right here. All three of those rays uh, tell us that that's where my image is. Now, when I think about this one, if I wanted to figure out the characteristics of those, uh, are they all real rays? No, some of them are virtual. Some of them are not actually coming from there. So it is a virtual, virtual image. It is upright and it is smaller. And just like we saw, exactly like we saw with the... Um, there we go. Exactly like we saw with diverging mirrors, like everything is, is virtual, upright, and smaller. Every single little piece of it is virtual, upright, and smaller. So because it's all exactly the same, I'm not actually going to go through this one with you, but you might want to take a minute and try it out, and you can always go back and look at that last video to see if you can figure out why this one is virtual, upright, and smaller, and also figure out where the eyeball goes. So go ahead and put it on pause. Try it out right now. Alrighty, last little piece here is, do you remember the order of EMR? Raging Martians invade Venus using X-ray guns? Cool, today we talk very briefly about infrared. So infrared is heat, heat is in quotation marks, that you feel coming off a fire or coming from the sunshine or coming off a hot element or even coming off a person. So often used with military applications, you see people in camo spying on other people like this because humans are warm and we can pick up on that. Other places where we see it is just infrared cameras. Uh, I actually rented an infrared camera from the library of all places and I guess it's more borrowed than rented uh, to look at the windows and, and heat loss in my house. Uh, so you can see things that are warmer, you can see things that are cooler, uh, you can see crazy weird looking fuzzy chihuahuas or whatever this is uh, where the fur, that's the blue part, is insulating them and the eyeballs in the mouth and the ears are less insulated so they end up looking like a demon dog. Um, we'll also talk a little bit about visible light. So things that you should know about visible light is the range. It's from about 400 nanometers to about 700 nanometers. Uh, so 400 corresponding to purple and 700 corresponding to red. Uh, and that is really all we can see. So I mean we're talking about all this EMR, gamma, x-ray, ultraviolet, infrared, microwave, radio, all these different types of EMR. They're all essentially the same thing. But we can only see this tiny, tiny, tiny little portion in here, um, probably because that's the tiny little portion that really comes through our atmosphere that we can we can see. Anyways, that's about it for this lesson. I know that there's the mathy part le left. We will pick that up in another video. Uh, you can take a little breather. You could go ahead and check out the other video right now if you wanted to, but we're going to put the brakes on for the videos at least. And uh, if you want to see the rest of the lesson, check out the next video. Okay, bye for now, Physics 30.